Dzień dobry, witam w programie Scanner Defense 24. Jesteśmy na Międzynarodowym Salonie Przemysłu Obronnego i naszym gościem dzisiaj jest Tom La Liberty, przedstawiciel koncernu Rayton w Polsce. Koncernu, który jest znany przede wszystkim z tego, że realizuje w Polsce jeden z najważniejszych programów zbrojeniowych, a więc program Wisła. I właśnie od programu Wisła zaczniemy naszą rozmowę. The Polish Minister of Defense announced several weeks ago that Poland is receiving components of Wisła system in the first phase, including the radars. What is the current stage of the phase, phase one on Wis Wisła and when will the system become operational? So great news. We're delivering the components of Wisła phase one, uh, including the radar, the engagement control shelters, the uh, launchers and the support equipment. Uh, we're integrating that equipment uh, beginning in October next month in uh, an event we call System Integration and Checkout. And so that's when we bring together the equipment uh, produced both in the United States and here in Poland, and we integrate that together into operating fire units. Following that, the Polish operators of that equipment will go through new equipment training as a, an operational unit and then be ready to uh, go through the rest of their training and ultimately uh, go to initial operation capability. So this is the Wisła phase one yes. program, but uh, Poland has sent a letter of, of request for the second phase of Wisła program with quite an ambitious schedule and with the LTA MDS radars. So how do you think this schedule and uh, first deliveries from 2026 are realistic? So the, uh, the government of Poland has requested uh, essentially a letter of, uh, of acceptance from the United States for Wiesla phase two. So uh, the first portion of that is to go with the United States Army, uh, meet with them and discuss the specific requirements of the program, the components, the specific pieces of equipment, uh, the time phasing of that equipment's delivery and so forth. And it'll probably be uh, in about a year's time before that's all finalized. And once that's all finalized, uh, we'll probably have a better understanding of the specific timeline for delivery uh, of the system. But, uh, you know, the, the timeline that the, the Polish MOD has, uh, has laid out is, uh, is very much uh, achievable in my mind. So you are optimistic for this? I'm program, very yes? optimistic that okay. uh, this is achievable. Uh, but in the next phase of the Wisła program, uh, Poland want to receive the new radar, yes. LTA MDS. What possibility does this radar have? And uh, could you please explain why you use the name lower tire air and missile defense sensor? Because this radar is the mid-range mid radar. So this is not low tire. So uh, LTA MDS or uh, LTAMS is lower tier air and missile defense sensor. Yeah. So in the United States, uh, the air and missile defense uh, mission is uh, divided uh, a little bit differently than the NATO terminology. So there's the upper tier, which is essentially high endo atmospheric and exo atmospheric. Below that tier is called lower tier and below that is called short and medium range. So this is not, sh not short round, uh, range radar? No, this is a long range radar. Okay. This, this radar is very capable. Could you give some detail about this radar? Yeah, so, so first of all, it's 360 degrees of coverage. It's uh, an AESA radar, meaning that it's an all digital radar and you can be very, uh, very flexible in the way you manage the radar resources. The radar is made with gallium nitride technology. This is the most efficient uh, uh, substrate technology that can be used in electronics known today. Gives you very high power efficiency. And by doing that, you have a very, very capable radar in that it can see uh, two and a half times uh, longer distance than an existing Patriot radar today. And then the, the capability of the radar is to manage many, many more objects. So many more threats uh, of all different uh, uh, kinds and types. So ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, aircraft, uh, UAS, all types and varieties, and then maybe most importantly, can manage them all at the same time. As we've seen recently, the adversary will coordinate their attacks such that multiple types of threats arrive at 
the defended area at the same time. So you need a sensor that can manage all of that complexity. And that's what LTAMS does. Okay, but less than two years ago, after the contract, with, because you awarded the contract with the U.S. Army, and uh, in May this year, Rayton Missile Defense delivers the first of six radars, LTMDS. What is, are the results of the test of this radar in the uh, carried out at the White Sand Missile Training Ground in New Mexico? So uh, you're right. In May, we delivered the first of the production uh, representative units of, of LTAMs. Uh, we'll deliver six of those uh, throughout uh, the rest of this year. Um, five of them are through production, and the sixth one is finishing production today. The five that are through production are all in some phase of test. So they're either at White Sands Missile Range, or they're at uh, our Pelham, New Hampshire uh, open air test facility, and they're going through a variety of tests, both uh, uh, tests around uh, environmental uh, conditioning or performance testing or endurance testing. Uh, integration with IBCS is another uh, focus of the, uh, of the activities today to ensure that uh, when the radars are delivered to the U.S. Army for their IOC, uh, they are integrated and working uh, with the IBCS uh, command and control system. So we can say that this radar is, is ready to operational life, yes? This radar is, will be ready to go to initial operation uh, capability when it's delivered to the Army. Okay. After the initiation of the FAS-2 of VISWA program, there were promises of much stronger cooperation with Polish industry. What exactly does that mean? Well, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but what I can tell you is we've had tremendous success partnering with Polish industry. So in Wiesla phase one, we have nine partners from Polish industry, and they have uh, all delivered on their commitments to deliver capability to Raytheon and to the Polish MOD, and we'll see that uh, in kind of in real action next month when we start the system integration and checkout. The other thing I'd say is for many of these partners, not only are they participating in the Polish Wiesla program, but they're now part of the global supply chain for Raytheon missiles and defense, and now are providing uh, supply on Patriot, especially for all of our customers around the world. Okay. And uh, the question about the missile, because in your pavilion in MSPO this year, you present Skyceptor missile. Does that mean that it is still possible to introduce this rocket, this missile, into Polish Patriot battery, and what will be what will we get by introducing Sky Scepter to the Polish battery? Well, of course, integrating Sky Scepter or any other missile into the Polish architecture is up to the Polish MOND. Uh, what I can tell you about Sky Scepter is it's a uh, it's a tremendous capability uh, that can be integrated with uh, the the Patriot uh, components as part of IBCS uh, going forward. And it's essentially an option for uh, any of our customers uh, that might be interested in uh, a, a different interceptor that provides uh, capabilities against uh, tactical ballistic missiles and uh, air breathing threats uh, at a very attractive price. It is true that it is, it's low cost missile? Everything's, uh, everything's relative. relative as, I, as I'm sure you know, uh, very very uh, complex uh, missiles like uh, the Patriot missiles uh, are relatively expensive. And so by comparison, uh, you know, the Sky Scepter uh, missile is, is really a good value. And the second, que the second question about this the, this, the same subject. So, because two years ago, you present here in Kielce, you present the Sky Hunter missile. So this is the American version of Tamir, a Israeli missile from Rafael's famous uh, Iron, Iron Dome system. Yes. yes. What is this missile? For what system it is proposed? And is it Sky Hunter being proposed for Poland? Sky Hunter, uh, as you said, is uh, you know part of the Iron Dome system, uh, or the the Tamir uh, is part of the Iron Dome system. Sky Hunter is a uh, is a uh, a version of Tamir that meets both FM, United States FMS requirements as well as NATO requirements. Uh, we, we, we 
talk about uh, Sky Hunter as another option for various militaries to consider. Uh, it's very well proven uh, in Israel uh, in the defense against uh, rockets and short-range missiles, and it could potentially be integrated with some of the short-range systems that uh, that the uh, Polish military is looking at. But again, that's the choice of the Polish military. We just want to be able to offer as many options as we can for their consideration. Thank you very much. You're welcome.